the sequelae to the visual system or the toes is exorbitism, tear de drainage abnormalities, corneal exposure, corneal infection, strabismus, abnormal extraocular muscles, papilledema, optic atrophy, and high refractive errors and amblyopia. So aim of our study is to analyze the visual outcomes in children with craniosynostosis. It's a retrospective study done in our hospital till date. The best cut of visual acuity, the cover test, extraocular movements, cycloplegic refraction, fundus findings were analyzed. These are the few children who presented to us with the craniosynostosis. So the results were like this. 24 children were identified. The mean age at the presentation was six years. The mean BZV at the final follow-up was 0.47 logmar. The average follow-up was three and a half years. Amblyopia was found in nine children. In them, the vision improved from 0.7 logmar to 0.3 logmar. One had optic atrophy. One had anterior segment dystenesis as found in this pictures. 21 had refractive errors. The amblyopia in craniosynostosis is most commonly is due to the amyotropic amblyopia. The strabismus commonly is the exotropia followed by the isotropia and the vertical deviation. The compound myopic astigmatism is found to be commonly present in these children. So the ophthalmic abnormalities are known to be associated with the isolated and syndromic craniosynostosis. The visual loss in these children is mainly due to the refractive error, amblyopia, corneal exposure keratopathy, optic neuropathy. According to Korn et al., the horizontal strabismus is commonly found, and astigmatism is the commonest refractive error, which coincides with our study results as well. The increased risk of amblyopia in these children has been already proved. The age at presentation in our study was six years, and it was a bit late. Might be due to the associated general systemic condition for which the craniopharyngeal surgeons have re referred to us a little late. Probably they are right in that the visual loss caused by the raised intracranial ICT is the main reason and early referral of such children should be encouraged. In our patient population, children with the craniosynosis were at increased risk of amblyopia, strabismus, and refractive errors leading to the visual loss. Structural abnormalities contribute to loss of vision in only two children. Limitation of our study being the small sample size, retrospective nature, and no control group. So the conclusion, visual loss is likely to be multifactorial. Children in these category are at increased risk for amblyopia, strabismus, and refractive errors. In majority of cases, the visual loss is reversible if the treatment is initiated early. Though they present phenotypically different, they have the right to a good vision. So early referral to a pediatric ophthalmologist for a formal eye examination and potential treatment is therefore recommended. Thank you.